This is a review of the Vantru N4 3 channel dash cam. Vantru was nice enough to send me this dash cam for free to review. So let's start off by seeing what's inside the box. Here. Instruction manual. Suction cup mount. Type C to USB. All right, here's your standard cigarette lighter charger. Inside here you have the USB charging port, really long cable, and a type C. There's the dash cam. Three channel 1080p. This is the cord to wire the back dash cam. And that's the rear dash cam right there. Sticky tape, 3M sticky tape. Here's a look at everything that comes inside the box. And here's a close up of the rear dash cam. And it also rotates 360 degrees. Here's a closer look at the main unit here. Turning it to its side, it has the reset button, SD card slot, HD out and the port for the rear dash cam. I highly recommend the Samsung Evo 256 gigabyte micro SD card or the Vantru 256 gigabyte micro SD card. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the previous model to the left, the N2 Pro and the N4 on the right here. This has a way bigger screen and flipping them around You can see that the design is very similar. These controls are on the bottom and the N4 on the top. They both have the four infrared sensors here. They both can adjust viewing angles like that. Without further ado, let's take this thing out for a spin. Installation was pretty easy. To get the wire plugged in, you just want to run it all the way up. You want to run it through your headliner all the way down to underneath, and eventually you want to plug it in right there. The suction cup mount is very strong, and if you want to take this off, you got to unplug the rear dash. To take the camera off, push this tab in right here and pull it out. Pull it out like that. This is how the top of the dash cam looks. You have the menu button here. Okay. Back and forward power button. Super easy to use menu. Turn the car on. Camera starts automatically. We're filming all three cameras at once. There's the cabin, rear camera, front camera. Red dot means we're recording. We have our timer here. If you want to lock the footage so it doesn't get accidentally erased, you click this, that red key means the footage is locked. Press OK. Good to go. Here's the button for the menu, which you can turn on while you're in record mode. Uh, here's record setup, resolution, front cabin, rear, front cabin, front, rear, front. If you want the best resolution and you just want to film with your front camera, you can do that with 1520p. Other settings there. What we want is all three front cabin rear which films at 1440p in the front and 1080p in the cabin and the rear cam at 30 frames per second loop recording you have one three or five minutes i like to leave mine on five minutes ir leds or night vision auto so it automatically turns on when it gets dark g sensor we're going to turn this on low because i have a lot of potholes 
in Hawaii. Okay, audio recording on parking mode. You have collision detection or collision plus motion detection. We're gonna leave ours off because you have to buy a kit for the parking mode separately. Exposure, okay, you can tweak those settings out if you want. Wide dynamic range on. Number plate, I'll leave mine blank for now. Time stamps, mine are all off, but you can go ahead and turn your time stamps on. You can rotate display. You can do a time lapse. Okay, going back, let's go to the system setup. Language, English, format SD card. All data will be deleted if you do that. SD card works perfectly right at this start. So time and date, okay, that looks good. Auto LCD off. Okay, we'll leave that regular. Device sound, we have that on mute right now. Frequency, 60 Hertz. You can go to default settings if you want to, like that. And GPS also sold separately. Leave that off. Speed unit, miles per hour. Let's go to files. Event is all the footage that you saved with this button here, the red key, or if you got into an accident. Normal all your footage right here. You can click on that, check it out. And that's it. Click this to go back. And now we're rolling again. So there's a new feature with night vision. If for any reason you don't want that black and white night vision vampire eye look, you can turn that off with one quick click of the power button. And now I have natural light. And you can turn it right off with one click, just like that. So if you notice, you can see the wire running through here, but don't worry, you can easily hide that your liner here the same way that I did for um, the front dash cam I'm just leaving it like this for the purposes of this video so I can easily move it around little audio check here much full blast audio right there on the stereo 
I think overall this is a really great camera. I give it five stars. For the price, it can't be beat for about $270. You get the world's first three channel dash cam recording all three at the same time, front, cabin, rear, and you're getting uh, great quality. The N2 Pro was already good. The N4 is better. You have a better lens, you have a better sensor, you have a better aperture. License plates get picked up really good. The audio quality is decent. It's very usable. Although the N2 Pro does sound a little bit more clear. And I think that might be because of the super capacitor battery, which is an upgrade. And the camera can withstand extreme hot or cold. So, you know, you have an upgrade there, but the audio is a little bit less clear than the N2 Pro. That's the only thing that has got a slight decrease in quality. But besides that, everything you like about the N2 Pro, this N4 has, plus more. I don't think you can beat this dash cam for the price.